Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mina, and I'm from Lucid Vision Labs. Today, I will be talking about um, polarization imaging and how it can be used in industrial imaging. So most imaging tasks are primarily focused on getting enough contrast between what's considered normal versus what's considered abnormal. So in certain applications, there are certain features of the target objects we're trying to inspect. Um, it's really hard to see or it's really hard to uh, extract the characteristic. The example I'm showing here is inspecting a mechanical detail on a really delicate gear that's used in automotives. In regular imaging conditions, the size of gear teeth as well as certain features such as scratches and defects would be really hard to um, be extracted on regular monochrome images. But under polarization imaging, which you will see on the right side, uh, in the false color angle polarization image, the gear teeth feature as well as a fine scratch is really apparent. So going back to the concept of polarization, so what exactly is polarized light? So if you consider light as a propagating wave, it oscillates in certain direction. In the most simplified example, it, oscill it oscillates up and down and propagates in the direction that it's moving. Now if you're looking at the light front on, you will see that the oscillation is oscillating up and down and this is called linearly polarized light. But obviously it's not constrained to the up and down position, it can be at an angle. This is also called linearly polarized light. When light oscillates in several directions at the same time or omnidirectional, we call this as randomly polarized or not polarized. Now you consider um, definition of angle of linear polarization. When the light is linearly polarized, it can take a certain angle. There's also the concept of degree polarization, which is how well it's polarized in a certain direction. So characteristics such as angle of linear polarization, degree of linear polarization, as well as intensity of light can be captured in a concept called Stokes parameters. So how do you produce polarized light? So we're all very familiar with concepts such as wavelength, which can be reflected in the color of light under the visible spectrum, or the intensity of the light, which is basically the brightness of the light. But when it comes to polarization, how do you create polarized light? It's basically from passing regular light or normal light into a polarizer. And the polarizer can take a certain direction. So on the example in the slide, um, the light here is linearly polarized in a, a up and down position, whereas over here you have a polarizer that polarizes the light in the left and right oscillation direction. There's also another phenomenon where light can be, get, uh, can be polarized is through reflection. So when you have an unpolarized light hitting a flat surface and getting reflected, the reflected light will become linearly pol polarized in the direction of the surface. So how do you detect polarized light in an imaging task? Traditionally, polarization imaging requires placing a polarization filter in front of a regular camera to capture the light in the direction of the polarization consistent with the filter. And the, on, the, on the other side, if you want to create polarized light, you obviously need to put a polarization filter in front of the light source. In a typical imaging application, you would be passing the polarized light into the specimen and detecting the polarization uh, of the light on the outcoming direction. So now I'm going to talk about the new Sony PolarSense polarization technology. So the Sony PolarSense technology involves having a pixel array and a polarization array on top of the pixel array, and then the micro lens array on top of the wire grid polarizer, all packed into a compact polarized monochrome sensor. The structure of the pixel can be um, blown up, and you can see here there are four directions of polarization. Each, polarization uh, each angle of polarization is fitted onto a single pixel. We also have the color polarization sensor, which, on, uh, which have an RGB filter on top of the polarization wire grid. On the monochrome version, each pixel has its own polarization wire grid, and every four pixels form a calculation unit with four different directional polarization filter. The benefit of Sony IMX250MZR polarization technology 
um, is uh, it reduces pixel crosstalk when it compared to other traditional techniques to capture polarization light. So on a traditional uh, polarization uh, sensor, polarization filter is typically added after the sensor package is complete. So the polarizer would fall on top of the micro lens. In this case, when you have a zero degree polarization light hitting the sensor, there's a chance that the light would enter at an angle passing through the zero degree filter by getting absorbed by the photodiode that's actually under the 90 degree pixel. In this case, you would get a false reading of 90 degree polarized light, whereas the actual imaging condition does not have any 90 degree light present. On the Sony technology, because the wire grid is actually beneath the micro lens, when the zero degree polarization light hits the micro lens and encounter the micro um, wire grid polarizer, it will get rejected as it's supposed to be. Now looking at Sony PolarSense polarization sensor offering, we currently have IMAX 250 MZR and MYR, which is the five megapixel polarization filter in both the color and monochrome version. With its 3.45 micron pixel size and two-third optical format, you're able to achieve a sensor frame rate of over 100 frames per second. And when we measure the extinction ratio, it's capable of achieving 300 to one at 500 nanometer. Sony is also coming up with a higher resolution version, IMX253, which is the 12 megapixel version. But you would expect typical, uh, the same kind of imaging performance as the five megapixel version. Lucid integrated the uh, sensor onto our camera platform on both the Phoenix and Triton and we're currently offering these models. Other than integrating the sensor, Lucid has already done some sensor characteristic on the polarization quantum efficiency. Uh, we measured the performance of the sensor against EMBA 1288 standard, and we've already uh, published polarization uh, quantum efficiency in four different um, polarization channels on our website. Not only do we publish the quantum efficiency, we also characterize dynamic range, signal to noise ratio, as well as other important imaging performance characteristics. Extinction ratio, on the other hand, is also a ratio that a design engineer care about a lot because it affects how well the degree of polarization can be measured. We've also characterized extinction ratio in various um, wavelengths as well. So how do you actually visualize polarization data? If you take an image with our Phoenix polarization camera, you can map the polarization data onto a color wheel in the HSV color space. In terms of the angle of polarization, it can be matched to different color on the color wheel. Degree of polarization information will be mapped onto the saturation of the particular color. So what can you actually do with polarization imaging? A typical use case would be inspecting transparent plastic materials, such as a cell phone case. On the left side, you will see a regular monochrome image, but really, you can't really extract too much information out of it, other than you will see a rectangular object and its edges. But now if you look at the polarization image that's mapped onto the HSV color wheel that I talked about, not only do you see the internal stress that's mapped into the vibrant color, you will also see a scratch mark that's being characterized in the rect rectangular box. The challenges in current inspection tasks involves looking at internal stress, clear, clear plastic, as well as looking at very strong reflective surface or an object with low contrast. One inspection technique involves shining a polarized light onto a specimen and looking at the reflected light and detecting a change in the polarization state. It is effective in detecting surface damage, surface flatness, and certain characteristics such as scratches and dents. In this application, we've, uh, we're looking at a shrink wrap package that has a rip in the plastic shrink wrap, as well as a foreign object that's present. Uh, we use the sticker as an example. So now we take an image using the polarization uh, camera, and each quadrant represents the image in the polarization, uh, in a certain polarization angle. And as you can see, three of the angles suffer strong reflection, 
whereas the horizontal angle can effectively filter out the, the glare from the plastic shrink wrap. If you tilt the light source and the camera at the angle, you will also see some interesting results. If your goal is to detect the rip in the package or the presence of a foreign object such as a sticker, in the horizontal direction, you will see that polarized light that's reflected off of the good surface is much stronger in, the, um, in intensity, whereas the presence of the sticker and the rip scatters the polarized light. Another typical example of using polarization imaging is looking at welding spots. Welding spots that's present on metal objects are usually shiny. So regular inspection uh, technique will suffer from strong glare or reflection. Using polarized light and polarized imaging, we can see uh, fine details of the welding spots without suffering from the glare. Or you can use polarization imaging technique to look at semiconductor wafer, which is also shiny in general. The degree of polarization image can show all the fine structure of the, polarized, uh, of the semiconductor wafer. There are certain scenarios where you don't really need polarized light. In this case, a regular unpolarized light is, being, uh, is shining on the specimen and the camera is inspecting the images on the other side. If you're shining a regular uh, light source onto the carbon fiber, for example, the regular intensity image doesn't really show any fine detail of the carbon fiber, so it's really hard to see the texture. Whereas on the false color image, which represent the angle of polarization, you will see the fiber orientation in both the purple and the orange, both map in the, into the HSV color space. The third technique is using the transmission technique, whereas polarization light is passing through the material itself, and the camera is looking at the images on the other side. It's effective in detecting any internal stress in transparent objects, any sort of scratches as well. This is an example of looking at a transparent glass tumbler or cup and detecting any sort of internal stress information. On the left side is the regular monochrome image. You don't really see much in terms of the internals of the glass. And on the right side, it's a false color image using polarization technique. And as you can see, some high uh, stress hot points. We've also encountered customers using polarization light to inspect contact lens. In this case, the user decided to use polarization light and inspect the uh, quality of the contact lens edge or any sort of scratch or an object in the solution itself. Since there's ways to do polarization imaging with the addition of filters in front of cameras or filters in front of light source, why would you want to use a polarization camera? Existing polarization solution usually involves taking several cameras and placing polarization filter in front of each camera to gather multiple angle polarization information. It usually involves more variables. Uh, distortion, just because the multiple cameras are not located at the exact same location. It costs more money, just because you have more components. And obviously, greater setup and development effort. Or you can choose to put a system where you have a single camera, but you need to rotate the polarization filter in front of it to extract uh, various angle polarization information. In this scenario, you have to flip between filters very fast. There's time delay in terms of filter rotation. And obviously, as designers, moving mechanical parts is not necessarily the, always the best idea. Or you may choose to use our camera with a lens in front. In this case, no moving parts, simple setup, just a single camera, overall system, cost saving, uh, not a lot of effort to set up or develop. So Lucid currently offers polarization camera on the Phoenix um, product family, which is the smallest PV PoE camera in the industry. We support NF lens mount, uh, which achieves a lot more space saving on the optics side. We also offer IS connector, which is also very more, uh, much more compact and robust. The camera itself is also transformable into various configurations, such as 90 degrees or 180. Polarization is also offered on the Triton product family, which is a robust IP67 with M12 and M8 connector. Along with the camera itself, we offer a software SDK called Arena. And in an Arena view, you're able to visualize both the regular monochrome image, HSV overlay false color, as well as the degree of linear polarization image. So Lucid, Lucid Vision Lab, we're a new company founded in 2017 based in Canada. 
We started shipping product this year, and we design and manufacture innovative machine vision products uh, that uses new technology. Thank you for your time, and please visit us at booth 1C62 for a live demo.